Welcome everyone, this is a bit of a different type of video. We have four games in just this one video. This video will be highlighting games 15 through 18 of the 2024 season, and there's some big games with some big playoff implications. Looking at the current playoff bracket right now, we have the Mustangs and the Phoenix having a bye to the semifinals currently. We have the Vipers, Redbirds, and Ducks sitting to the bye to the quarterfinals. And then we have the Steamrollers and the Crushers sitting in the wildcard spots as of now, while the Riptides are out of the playoffs. All these teams do still have a chance to make playoffs, even the Riptides who are 0-4, they're in the hunt. Uh, and let's get right into these games. Phoenix and Steamrollers is game one of the four game set. And if the Steamrollers can win this one, they will clinch playoff berth. And if the Phoenix can win this one, it would be huge for them because they can stay in the running for that number one overall seed. Just like in the last game, Jackson Kespel gets the nod to start. Chases it. Oh my god. I haven't seen the steamrollers look that bad at the plate in years. And Nick Kespel will take that base open. Base is loaded. The full count from Kyle. Got him! Came back from a 5-1. One away from getting out of the jam. The pitch. Popped. Oh no. Third base side, running over, what a catch! Oh. Kyle Belcher, little over the shoulder action, and he gets out of the bases loaded jam. Line. Is he the most exciting man in Blissball right now? He might be. Uh oh, in the air. First base side caught by Drew Sappingfield. Didn't carry quite as much as it looked off the bat, but that will end the half inning. No run scored, still tied. Ground ball to the shortstop side, and it gets through. One run scores. Drew Sappingfield circling, and he is safe at home. Two runs score. After a long time looking at the review, the call is overturned. He was out at home. In the air, flying out to center. Richie under it, catch made. And sprinting home is Jackson Kespel, and he will tag up and score. It is now a 2-0 game. Check swing, got him. They need two runs in this half inning. Otherwise, the Phoenix are going to improve to three and one. You have the undisputed number one pitcher in Blitzball, Adam Knutson, and they're turning to Jackson Kespel to close this one out. Two strikes to Joey DeMeo. Got it, the Phoenix take down the steamrollers and they improved to three and one as they move their way up the standings. They now sit in second place, just below the Mustangs. And Jackson Kespel, I think is the story in this one. The Phoenix take care of business against the Steamrollers and Jackson Kespel has been the story of the Phoenix so far this season. He's been a real ace on the mound so far. I mean, he's definitely in the Cy Young running, probably the most improved player this season. He has been amazing on the mound. And with this win by the Phoenix, that is huge because they play the Mustangs in game number 20, and game 20 will be for the number one overall seed. If the Phoenix can win that one, they'll take the number one seed, so that's a big win from them over the Steamrollers. And heading into game number two, we have the Ducks versus the Crushers. If the Ducks win this one, they clinch the quarterfinals. They will have that automatic buy and be a top five seed, while the Crushers are trying to stay on that wild card spot. So a win here would be big for them. Here in the top of the first inning, Tyler hits a drive with the shortstop side, and that gets under the fence. Runners on second and third. Quinn Myers up next, hits a pop fly. Cooper ranging over, and that will be the third out of the inning. That ends the top of the first, now headed into the bottom of the first. Colin Stone on the mound. What a pitch to me on a rising slider. Colin, perfect third one. Now headed into inning number two. Caden Sartain on the bump. Colin hits one in play. Cooper misses the throw at third. A run comes in for the Ducks. A big mistake by Cooper Carley there. And now Quinn is up with the base loaded and he takes his walk. Caden walks a run in. We're now sitting at 2-0 in favor of the Ducks. And Caden sits down Tyler Davis to end the top of the second. A good pitch there from you. 2-0 ball game, Tyler Davis taking over on the bump. First round of the inning, he walks Noah Swafford, runner on first. And now Caden Sartain up and look at this drive. <laughs> Holy smokes, to tie the game up, Caden Sartain with a daddy hack off of Tyler Davis, a two run homer as he waves to the crowd. A big hit to tie up the ball game, the Crushers are hyped. And then Caden back up and Tyler that time, able to sit him down. That will end the second inning. 
2-2 ball game all tied up. And in the third, Tyler hits one up the middle, gets past Blake Sappingfield. Quinn coming around and that'll score the third run of the ball game and take the lead for the Ducks. And then from there, Cooper able to shut it down, but the Ducks with the lead headed into the bottom of the third. Crusher's gotta get the bats going and Caden starts it off with a big hit up the middle. Runners now on first and second base. Late in this ball game, a lot of pressure on Cooper. Two outs, two runners on the pitch from Colin. Got him to chase and wave at it. The Ducks win this one three to two. Everyone predicted the Ducks to finish last this season and the Ducks secured their first ever winning season. They win this one three to two and they're three and two in the record and have that automatic buy to the quarterfinals. It was a close one, but the Ducks take the win over the Crushers and the Ducks clinch the quarterfinals at the number three seed. And for us, the Crushers, we lost the game. We were sitting in the wild card, still at the seventh seed. A little bit tough for the Crushers, tough loss. They do drop to one and three. And uh, it's going to be an uphill battle for you guys to get out of that 6-7 wild card spot. Still a chance at it, but an uphill battle for sure. Now the third game of this four game set, and this is a big one. Steamrollers, Riptides. These are the only two teams in the entire league who still have a chance of missing these playoffs. The Riptides are 0-4, and surprisingly, if they can win this one and the Steamrollers lose their next one, they would actually get into the playoffs. So big game here. Steamrollers looking to clinch playoff berth and Riptides trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. Josh Bradley is the starting pitcher for the Riptides. Strike three. From the sun. Strike three. The 4-2 count. Strike three. Josh Bradley, one, two, three. Immaculate ending from him. Ball six, bases are loaded. Two strikes. Oh, what a pitch. And that is two outs in the inning. Two strikes. Gets him at 75, and Joey will get out of the inning scoreless. Up the middle, into center, Kyle Belcher rounding third, going home. Hudson grabbing it, tossing it, and he will not be able to get the ball out in time. Kyle Belcher will score. In play, Therese bobbles it, trying to throw it to first. Hudson tries to make the catch, he won't make it. One run scores, Richie coming in. Two run score. It's all falling apart now. It's like a boat that's sinking and on fire at the same time. <laughs> In the air, Hudson running after it, and he makes the catch, and that will finally end the inning, but the Steamrollers tack on three runs. In play, Kyle bobbles it, and everyone will be safe. One run scores, and it is now three to one. A makeable player there at the mound, but Kyle not able to grab it. Every batter. Ball in play, Kyle grabbing it, hits Josh Bradley for the out, gets the opportunity again, and he makes it that time. In play, goes past Joey, one run scores, Cooper Carley running it in, and it's an overthrow and two run score. We have a tie ball game, runners on second and third. One inning makes a big difference in this half inning. Two strikes. Strike three, Kyle Belcher gets out of the inning and it's still a tie ball game and we're headed into the third. In the air, Josh running after it and he will make the play. And a run would prevent the Riptides from being the meme of the league. Big half inning coming up here, Joey DeMeo coming back into the game for the Steamrollers. Strike three and we are going into extra innings and an at-bat for at-bat playoff. Each team picks one batter, one pitcher and the better result of these two at-bats is the winner. Final stakes on the line, and the Riptides are turning to Reese Clapper. D1 baseball pitcher was a Cy Young and Como Bliss ball for so long. Strike one. In the air, Reese going after it, and he will make the play. A single would win it for him, and Hudson has a chance to do that and walk it off for him to give them a win. Strike three at 80. We're going into second sudden death. In play, and that will be a double for Joey DeMeo. And now the Riptides need a match, or else they're going 0-5 <laughs> again. Two strikes, strike three. The Steamrollers take the win in extras. Big player from the extras again was Kyle Belcher, striking out Reese Clapp. We will see them in the playoffs. And the Riptides 0-5 for two years of their three as a franchise. In an extra inning battle, 
The Riptides even brought Reese out to pitch, but it was not enough. The Steamrollers take the win in the Riptides go 0-5, and they're the one team that gets eliminated from the playoffs in Como Blitzball this year. Yeah, Riptides, they've now had two years of being 0-5, and, and the big difference, they didn't have Trent Severino. Hudson Borgmeyer and the Riptides, 0-10 without him on the squad. That's rude. And uh, Steamrollers, they're 2-2, two two. they're looking good. They are automatically into the postseason. And the final game of this four-game set is Cadence Crushers versus my Redbirds. And this is the big one, because if the Redbirds come out on top, if my team can win this one, we secure a top five seed and we'll be in the quarterfinals. And we'd also send the Crushers to the wild card. But on the other side, if Crushers can win this one, you guys got a chance of getting out of that wild card six, seven matchup. Ball in play to Matt, feels it, throws the first and gets the third out of the inning. Good inning there from the Redbirds. The one, two pitch from Cooper to Chandler. Swing and a miss, strike three. And we are left scoreless after the first inning. Pitch from Jake to Caden. In play to Matt. Fields it and gets Caden out at first with the peg before he steps on the bag. And that's the third out in the inning. And we are still scoreless going into the bottom of the second. As the bases are now loaded for Aiden. Strike three. <laughs> Your best hitter up to bat, Caden Pitching, the two-strike pitch. Strike three, and Caden gets Chandler out to end the inning and keep this game scoreless. The two-strike pitch from Matt to Cooper. Strike three! Only a half inning left in regulation. The pitch misses low, and Chandler will take his walk as the winning run is now on first base. In play to Blake. Oh, and it gets through his legs and it rolls to the fence. But Chandler will stop at second, and there are now two runners on base. The winning run in scoring position with Aiden up to bat. Ball in play to Blake. Bobbles it, and Chandler is going home. The throw to Caden. It gets Chandler out on the in the inning, and we're going to extras. What is Chandler doing? He was coming up with the bases loaded, and he decides to give himself the green light. And between the two hitters, whoever has the better outcome will win. Looks like Matt will be the pitcher for the Redbirds with Caden as your hitter. Swing and a miss from Caden. That was a very poor AB, I have to say so myself. In play, if it makes it to the grass, and it will, and the Redbirds win. Excellent pitcher's duel that we had here as the Redbirds make it out in extra innings to get the win. Another extra inning game, but the Redbirds beat the Crushers off of Chandler's walk-off hit off of Cooper Carley, and the Redbirds send the Crushers to the wild card, and now the Redbirds, they clinch the quarterfinals. And what a way to end the season for them and the Crushers sitting at 1-4 and four at the 7th seed. Yeah, both these team seasons are now completed. Your crushers are in the wild card. And speaking of the wild card, in game 19, coming next video, we have these steamrollers who are two and two and the vipers who are two and two matching off. The loser of that game will drop down and play the crushers in the wild card. So big one in game 19. And then in game 20, you have the Phoenix and Mustangs matching off for the number one overall seed heading into the playoffs. One of the most competitive seasons we've ever seen. Super balanced league this year, and we cannot wait to show you the rest of this season. Riptides are 0-10 without Trent Severino. Uh-oh. <laughs>